Any health-related information on the following show provides general information only. Content presented on any show by any host or guest should not be substituted for a doctor's advice. Always consult your physician before beginning any new diet, exercise, or treatment program. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Namaste Wellness Show, where we talk about all things holistic health for the mind, body, and spirit for people and pets with a touch of cultural soul. My name is Laura. I'm your host. Thank you so much for being with me today. Today, my very special guest is the owner of Mayflower Bookstore. He's also a um, astrological consultant. He's a psychic reader, lecturer, and also a musician. Welcome to the show, Robert Thibodeau. Hi, thank you. Hi. So um, Robert is going to be on audio today, so that's why you don't see him up on camera. And uh, the reason I had him, want him, wanted him to be on the show today is because I've been going to his bookstore for, what, 30 year, over 30 years now, and he has all kind of books regarding holistic health, spirituality, um, energy healing, all types of books. So I'm really excited to have you on the show. And the another reason I want to have you on the show is I, I know we didn't talk about this before, but I want to talk a little bit about numerology because we are in a seven year. And I think this is a really good time for people to do self-reflection and just go inward. You know, so many people are hurting. There's so many things going on in the world. So I think it's a really good time for people to just reflect on themselves and just do some self, um, uh, self do some things that can help them to be able to understand themselves better and really understand the world around them. So just to begin, Robert, tell us a little bit about what and when and why you started the Mayflower Bookstore? Well, I was brought up, I was brought up as a child, very, very Christian. I mean, like really strict. And um, it was a big surprise to me to discover that the Jew and the Hindu and the Islam and the, all the other religions had something very beautiful about them too. And that I could take the best of every one of them and, and grow in new ways and and make friends in new ways and garden in new ways and make peace. And, you know, I, th that's what I discovered, you know, and, and of course it was, it was tough because some, some people, some of my relatives thought I was going to go to hell for even studying another religion mm. and not condemning other people to go to hell. <laughs> so I, I, I really had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun meeting um, Tibetan lamas and Jewish rabbis and Hindus and gurus and India and Persian, right. ancient Persian, Egyptology. And, and, you know, in the bookstore, I would meet people like Dick Gregory interested right. in, yeah. in Egyptology and Hermetics, you know, and I, yeah. I meet ZZ Top and Willie Nelson. And I meet all these cool people, wow. uh, rappers and country and the Grateful Dead. And, you know, I met all these Claudia Schiffer, I'd meet like supermodels and Hollywood movie star people. And, wow. and everybody wanted peace on the planet and love on the earth. And, and so I, ha I started to collect every book I could that would help you be cool. Okay. Awesome. Or become a better poet or a better mom or dad. I mean, I, I have books on how to have your baby at home if you don't want to go to the hospital. And yeah, I understand the doctor who first, who opened the first home delivery room at Providence Hospital. He yeah. told me that it was because of me radio that, that tell people to have their baby at home, that they opened up a home delivery room that meant really? fathers, fathers wow. could watch the child born. Because see, if the father watches the child born and what the mom goes through, the father has more of a commitment and allegiance to the, to the, uh, the, the suffering and the pleasure, you know, and the wow. hope of the future. And I think, I think that we could have a b more peace on this planet if we educated our inner self, our our holistic self, if you will. To exactly. be healed means to be made whole. And so, so I think that if we had, like, 
like maybe we cannot get rid of the guns, but maybe we could educate everybody to love the earth and love all the relationships that are here with, with, right. within ourselves and the trees and the plants and the animals and the birds and the fresh water and air. We need that to survive. Human beings wouldn't be the same if we lived on Mars. And so, so we're rushing out into outer space, but we should be trying to discover life on Earth. Right. <laughs> Rather right. than destroying life on Earth hoping we're going to find some spiritual self after we destroy things. So I'm into um, everything, anything that would help us um, improve our life and make a more honorable, harmonious relationship with the world around. And so, yeah, like in numerology that you mentioned, it's a seven year. But like if you add up, like if you add up your month and your date, let's say you were born April 10th, you know, so that's April the fourth month, and the tenth is a ten. So ten and four is fourteen. One and four is five. And then you add the five to the seven year, you know, and your personal year uh, with seven and five would be a, a twelve, 12. Or, or a one and two is three. So mm-hmm. it's either twelve or three. And so that's another way to get into it. And in numerology, one is it's all about one, me or you or somebody who's just one being one, and two is either a soulmate or at war with somebody and Mm -hmm. three is trying to find harmony and four is security and home and five is creativity and six is uh, sex or harmony and relationship to other things. Mm -hmm. And seven is uh, a divine marriage and eight is death and rebirth. And nine is a relationship to the great mother or great changes that might take place to better you. And Mm -hmm. 10 is completion. Mm -hmm. So in numerology, you boil everything, your house number, mm-hmm. house number, put down the one to 10 or mm-hmm. your year that was the seven, which is looking for the divine relationship with God or mm-hmm. our soulmate, our twin flame. But actually, when you find a twin flame, it doesn't necessarily mean love. It mm-hmm. means that you found somebody who fires you up with inspiration and imagination and intuition and the fire of uh, creativity uh, transforms the negative into positive. So, again, um, if it if it doesn't make your life and the world around you better, it may not be your way. Mm. Right. But there's always. A, so, I mean, you. I, I, oh, go ahead. I used to be the instructor for the Detroit Lions and the and the, <laughs> I used to say the Tigers and Bears, but the hockey players and Bob Lambeer, the basketball guy. Way in the old days, I used to be like an astrologer for the football and the baseball. And I met all these major players in baseball and announcers and was on the JP McCarthy show a lot. Yeah. And Mark Scott. You were also, I, I, you were also I on the Howard Stern a lot. I, and I was just curious, you know, not to cut you off, but I can only imagine what was it like being on the Howard Stern show? Were you doing astrology um, for him or what? I have, I, I, well, I would, you know, like as usual, like, whether it was the um, the the newscasters on the eleven o'clock news, Bill Bonds or Kelly, or in the old days, or it was Howard Stern, um, I had a really good relationship with all these guys. They would act mm-hmm. like they were uh, against what I was doing for the show. You know, they create controversy. Like Howard would say, "As long as those lights on the phone, if the lights all light up on the phone, you're doing good." I don't care if I like it or not. <laughs> okay. Like I mean, he would, I, I really <laughs> okay. liked Howard. Howard was in transcendental meditation, you know, and oh, he was, okay. and I predicted his divorce and he said he would never get divorced, but he did get divorced and, mm-hmm. and he's happier now, I think. And uh, I like Howard, you know, Howard told me that I was the only brain, the only head that could hold up against his, which I oh, said, wow. I responded with, I take that as a compliment. And he goes, he just nodded. Yeah. You know, so Howard and I didn't always agree, but we had a great respect for each other. Howard's really smart, for mm-hmm. number one. Yeah. A lot of people don't know, you know, and a lot of people kind of act on, but they're really, like ZZ Top, Billy Gibbons, is in the Mensa Society, and he's, like, really, really smart. And I think um, we live in a world that it's not good enough to be smart. You can mm-hmm. be really, really smart and have all the money in the world and all the guns, but you may not be happy. Right. And so right. we figure out how to make people happy and help them to be happy and co-creative. And what Socrates, uh, Plato's teacher who taught Aristotle, who taught Alexander the Great, I mean, they're all kind of connected. 
Socrates mm-hmm. said that happiness was when we're more fully participant with the life around us, with oh, the whole of our life. That makes sense. That makes sense to that, me. Yeah. Yeah, I think happiness is not just we're co-creative and p- more participant with the whole of the life around us, but I think we are are getting to a place in the world where we, we need to be co-creative with the future of the planet. And um, <clears throat> speaking of which, I have a friend that I, I sometimes debate, Marianne Williamson, who's running for president. She's running for president, right? Yeah. And, and she was she was a, uh, one of the ministers at the Unity Temple here in Detroit. So a lot of the people you were mentioning are in the Detroit area, mm-hmm. even the ball ballplayers. Um, we were talking about Detroit, Michigan, USA. Yeah. But go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I always loved her in a platonic spiritual way because she tries so hard to make the world a better place. And I might disagree with a point or two, but see, we can... We can love each other's spiritual potential. Right. We can love each other's divine child of God's self. We right. don't have to, like Jesus said, love one another. He didn't say you had to like everybody. Exactly. <laughs> That's a good point. These, re- a good point. these are the real teachings. And I think uh, what I'm about is having a whole bunch of good points so that all of us can share and take, it's like a smorgasbord, you know, you can, you go into a restaurant that has a big menu. When it comes to spirituality, there's a big menu. Yes. And uh, you can eat all you, you can handle it. You have to be able to digest it. A lot of people rush too quickly into something they're learning and they, they can't quite digest it all, you know, and it, it takes it takes a while, and, you know, which brings me up to like I think that when people get older and retire, they, they should be just like you have to go to school when you're little. I think elder people uh should be made to play a musical instrument. <laughs> mm. I say that it's a There's hope for me yet with my flute then. <laughs> Cause I've because tried. We, need, we, need, we need older people and mature people and the elderly to give their wisdom. But if you don't have any wisdom, that's why little kids and young people don't want to talk to older people and older people can't relate to the young people. And this is something that's gone on forever. Yeah. And so how do we bridge that? And, um, uh, so I'm just, I'm just posing questions. I'm not, mm-hmm. you might say that I have some answers for me and, but I, I don't know what the answer is for everybody listening. I know that we're getting more and more violent and that humanity is numbed out, drugged out, medicated out, escaped out. Mm-hmm. And we need to somehow bring the human being that's a divine child of God like that we're, we're all born equal in potential. Mm-hmm. Our, we're all born equal in potential soul. We, we may not be born equal outwardly. We all have different karma that was cause and effects of many lifetimes or, or our mother's mother's father's father, if you want to put it that way, our conditioning. But we all have an inner purpose and uh, a possibility of finding true meaning in life and purpose in life. And our, it's our God-given right to the pursue happiness and what happiness is is our inner self is co-creative with the world around us in the future and so whether you're using tarot cards or astrology or christianity or the jewish uh kabbalah mysticism or you're using meditation or yoga or you're using trying to eat better whether you think eating better is eating more meat i hope you chew well and and like my friend my old friend ted nugent mm. you know you you hunt your own you have this organic meat. He eats meat. I don't eat meat. I was mm. on a radio show once. They were hoping he and I would fight. And when he came on, he said, that's Robert Thibodeau, the guy at the bookstore, the astrologer. And they said, yeah. And he said, I have no beef with him. And right. I have no I have no grains and greens with him. <laughs> right. Well, I think it's all, um, what, what's beautiful about it, Robert, is that, you know, we have choices. That's the bottom line. And everything doesn't resonate with everybody. But you do have a choice yeah. to just like you talked about the smorgasbord, you can go and choose. You don't if you don't like um, tomatoes, don't get the tomatoes. You, you maybe you like uh, lettuce, go get the lettuce. So I think that's important thing and might be one of the keys of people coming together more and saying, OK, I may not agree with you, but I don't have to hate you. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. doesn't have to be hate. It's a spiritual choice. And uh, we we eat something, we eat something or we do something or we experience something. Does it really make us feel better? You know, they're coming out with a lot of statistics that pornography 
um, and in time makes the soul sick, and, it, mm. and people's relationships yeah. are wounded by dead pictures of a person rather yeah. than the real person. The, the real people we are is a river of time and, and a quality of space that we create. And mm. so, so I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, hey, if you want pornography, do it. But let's let's be open to talking about it. Right. Like, you know, right now we can't talk about it. You go online and social media and you click like or dislike. Mm-hmm. We don't, and they don't even have dislike anymore. Mm-hmm. Of, they don't have dislike anymore, and so, there, but there's no conversation, and very few people are qualified to have these kind of conversations. Now, again, in parts of California, parts of London, parts of Paris, parts of Russia, for God's sake, are into metaphysical spiritual truths. Parts of China, and whenever you travel around the world, everybody wishes they had peace. But what's up? And so we have, if, I mean, I, again, this isn't necessarily, meta, see, there's metaphysical spiritual reality, and then there's the material world, and we're trying to blend those. And so mm-hmm. from a spiritual point of view, a spiritual point of view, we can find happiness and grace and honor and inner respect, and whole, we can find heaven. Mm-hmm. I, they asked Jesus, they asked Jesus, did you come to bring us to the new Jerusalem, or in other words, to heaven? And he said, no, I came to bring heaven on earth. Don't you have eyes? Don't you have ears? Can't you see and hear? Right. And then he, another place, that he said, uh, at, at the end times, you'll do greater miracles than I. Yes, that's, one of, my, that's one of my God. favorite verses in the Bible. Yes. Do you that's not a know your God is coming and at the end times, you do greater miracles than I. Yes. I don't see greater miracles happening, so this must not be quite the end times. Well, and when, 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 the Christians, when the Christian Bible says your God's in the becoming, which the Old Testament has it in there too, but Jesus says it. Um, I think that, that that comes from the Neoplatonists and the Hermetic ancient Egypt as above, so below, then it became on earth as it is in heaven in the Our Father. And, and what we have is, yeah, gods in becoming. The word gods meant virtues or godlike. And so if you say we are virtues in the becoming, that ye, don't you know ye, ye are virtues? Uh, because the God thing can be a little bit of an ego trip. Again, um, I'm just offering this as an uh, opportunity to grow in new ways, if you like, because unless it works for you, whoever's listening, um, it may not be your cup of tea. Right. But I, I learned a long time ago, I met John Lennon real briefly, and he just yelled at me that, I, that my mouth was lying what I was eating. And, and I became a vegetarian because of him. And later I'd meet Dick Gregory at the Mayflower Bookshop. Yeah, I love and we had. I want to tell, I'm going to interject here, Dick Gregory, I read one of his books and he was one of the reasons I became a vegetarian. I'm not a a vegetarian now. I I do eat seafood and uh, poultry, but I did become a vegetarian after reading one of his books. Yeah. I just want to interject. A lot of what what he, we had long talks about brown rice. I turned him on to brown rice and Mm. grains as being really important. And he tried to put that in the Dick Gregory diet. I complained to him. They didn't give me credit, but you can only do what you want to do. And I'm just happy he, that I had a relationship with him as a friend and as, as, as another student that we both, he read so many books. I mean, he and Billy Gibbons, Easy Top, at that, around that same period of time, bought a lot of books from Mayflower and they read them and they'd come into Mayflower and they'd question me about it. And we'd have wonderful debates and conversations and sharings. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so they're vegetarians that are, they don't know how to mix beans and grains and they don't know about miso yes. soup and seaweed. I had to and, do that. And they don't yeah. know about spirulina. Spirulina is one of the things that I turned Dick Gregory on to. And that too was in his Dick Gregory diet. And right. he was he was trying to help people have a good diet because he thought if you had a good diet, eventually your kids would run the town. And if your kids had a good diet, they'd run the state. And if their kids had a good diet, you'd run the country. He had this whole okay. idea because... Yeah. Food creates the biochemistry that the boat of intellect sits on. Oh, and so okay. uh, if you just try, I mean, Jesus fasted, Moses fasted, mm-hmm. Buddha fasted. And a lot of us don't think we have to fast. But I think every once in a while, the whole idea of the seventh day you rest uh, for me. is that you give your body a break, you know. Uh-huh. And, and, and I'm still vegetarian, but I think not everybody can be a vegetarian. And almost all my mentors and teachers ate meat, you know. It, um, yeah. And I think you just. To, 
try to get quality and animals that aren't just mass produced with chemicals. And right. I mean, they cut off chicken eggs at it so they, they can't go anywhere and they produce eggs through chemicals where cows have growth hormones that are timed with uh, weight problems, you know? So, I mean, these are like, I, on one level, on spiritual level, it doesn't matter. We're all going to die. And the real question is, did we flower in our heart's intelligence? Did we flower with friends or music or some divine, di- like divination isn't to be psychic. Divination is to divine the divine in each other first. Okay. If, if we could see the divine in each other first and dialogue there and we could debate there, we could argue after that. Maybe not so many people, people who are shooting people up. There's a lot of research that they're on anti depressants and medications and drugs and alcohol, you know, they're mixing up a lot of stuff, number one. Mm-hmm. And also they don't, they don't feel loved and appreciated. And we got to, we got to love each other so that if we feel our angry, we're going to cry to somebody that was going to help us, you know, rather mm-hmm. than I'm going to show them and shoot the place mm-hmm. up. And, and so we, again, we're not going to be able to remove all the guns because people won't allow that. Um, mm-hmm. At least half the people won't. And so, but we can educate. Maybe if they can at least China. remove the the um, you know the uh, those real military, I guess military guns. If they could at least do that, and then you know you could uh, yeah. still have a <clears throat> have check to make sure you're not on all kinds of drugs and medications. I mean, maybe people that have the stronger guns should go in for drug testing. You know, they they do that with other people. They should have drug testing to make sure the person. How, nobody can survive heavy drugs. They're, they're bigger than us. Mm-hmm. And so we need to examine that. And again, it's a terrible thing to say. I wish I didn't have to say it. But if you take the greed and uh, the uh, unbelievable extreme profit out of war and medicine that we all need and home and housing and education we all need, if you take the greed and the profiteering out of the things we need to survive as humanity and brother and sister, we have a really nice planet. Mm-hmm. And some people make, you know, you can't tell people that the people who are really super rich, they have to come to it on their own. They're too rich. We can't take their money away. Right. We have, we have problems. So this is why Buddha, by the way, listen to this one. This is why Jesus and Buddha, the way that they got through to see people is they say, you don't need that. You don't need all that money. I saw, you know, um, a nice BBC article on if you have too little money or too much money, how, what a crime that is and how it, it, it repeatedly wounds the psyche or soul. A lot of us have jobs and things we do every day that wound our soul. And we don't know outwardly. We, we exercise more and we hide that we're wounded. Hmm. We're all God. How do we become adults? Like every Christmas we celebrate the baby Jesus, but we need to celebrate the adult that can stand with the Christ. We have Jesus, but not the Christ. The resurrected raised consciousness. Yeah. And whether you're a Rosicrucian or a Mason or you're a yogi or you're a Christian or you're a Jew, it doesn't matter what you're a Sufi. It, it, it doesn't matter. You know, you're a health freak and your God is, is uh, being healthy. It doesn't matter what your God is as long as it is a grace and benefit and blessing to you first and then other people. You can't share love if you don't got love. Right. So yeah, very interesting, Robert. I just want I just want to take a moment and just uh, since you're not on camera, and just these are some of the books I bought from your store. I don't remember this one. Um, I don't know if you can see the the, the uh, video or not, but this one is Astrology: The Divine Science by Marsha Moore and Mark Douglas. This is a huge mm-hmm. one that I bought from your store, and I know one of the topics we wanted to cover a little bit about was astrology because you are an astrologer and you, you know, had a couple predictions, maybe astrological predictions. And one of the things I wanted you to talk about, a lot of people feel, you mentioned the word divination, (laughs) say it for me. I can never say that. Divining the divine. Divining the divine. Okay. You say it. I'm tongue tied right now, but um, there are a lot of people that feel that. All the great cathedrals of Europe have in their rose window the 12 signs of the zodiac. And right. the church that didn't allow anybody to read from around 450 to 1400, the authority of uh, that had the Inquisition. And if you were declared a witch, they could take your land and they got rich. Mm-hmm. And um, pretty weird time. And 
but all the great cathedrals probably built by the spiritual Templars had, had like um, a magic and mystical spiritual charm to them. They all had the 12 signs of Zodiac. And throughout history, even popes use astrology, but they don't want you to use astrology. So I think astrology, um, when you think of astrology on a scientific level, they talk about instead of planetary aspects, they talk about planetary geometry. And there's scientific evidence about uh, every 11, 22 years, uh, timed with Uranus cycles, that there's uh, solar flares and sunspots, and they, that certain aspects block radio waves. There's a there's a whole science thing, you know, about extrovert and introvert. Like, mm -hmm. like um, it, you collect up all the planets in your signs, and Aries are extrovert, extrovert, Taurus are more introvert. It goes through opposites of every sign, you know. And there's a lot of psychology. A lot of psychologists are into it. Mm -hmm. And Ben Franklin, poor Richard's almanac, used to predict the weather and make predictions that the New York Times would often report his accuracy. And uh, Reagan used astrology. Otherwise, his wife was running the country. People mm -hmm. think his wife used astrology, but he was using it. Otherwise, his wife was de deciding every meeting with Gorbachev and the downfall of Russia. And so anyway, I could go on with the scientific and interesting side that the rich and poor use astrology, the middle class doesn't on a whole. But, but I think um, I had predicted that before Trump, uh, using astrology, I had thought, and again, you can't predict the future. You can only see the tendencies. It's yeah. like when you see a prognosis of the weather, then mm -hmm. you go to weather report, the weather prediction, or the stock market analysis. You're not always right. But in mm -hmm. medical analysis and prediction, you're not always right, but they're right a lot. And so same with astrology, you can't really predict the future because we could change it out of our freedom. Right. Every aspect, higher and lower octave. But if you're asking me who predicted Trump would run and then he'd win and that the next time he would lose. And I remember talking to somebody who worked with the Clinton campaign. They wanted to know if Mrs. Clinton was going to run this, uh, after the next time after Trump won. And I predicted that she wouldn't run or she would lose. Mm -hmm. And but I said, but don't worry. They were bummed out. I said, don't worry. Uh, Trump will lose. And they said, to who? I said, to whoever run. And I think a lot of people voted against Trump rather than for Biden. Hmm. And so what I'm pretty, next time is going to be really close. Mm -hmm. As we get close to the election in 2024, um, I'm, um, I had predicted, when I predicted that Biden would win, I predicted he may not finish his term. And I'm still wondering about that. And this is a more difficult prediction coming up because it looks really tight. And I thought that I think that Trump, ex-president Trump, has a lot of good aspects. You know, he has Jupiter trining his moon. So instance. do you think he will be convicted of this most recent um, DA, uh, the DA in New York, recent convictions that I mean, not convictions, but, you know, do you think he'll be convicted of? Uh, of I the... think it's, hard, it's really hard to convict him because uh -huh. he has a bunch of good. Now, he does have a couple tough, rough aspects. Um, but just consider the fact that if, if a GOP guy wins the presidency, um, that they could forgive him. They could they could exonerate him. Right. Right. So do you think that oh, do you think our next oh, president no, will be? Um, do you think our next? I'm predicting now. I, I'm predicting now that the next president, uh, number one, I'm predicting, uh, uh, what is his name? Uh, Newstrom. Maybe Newstrom. we shouldn't say, because I don't want to cause any havoc. <laughs> I mean, this is just oh, a no. prediction. You said, go ahead. Who are you well, looking I, for? Yeah, yeah, DeSantis? I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm, I, I'm not being held to it yet. But I, I'm just telling you that the governor of California has really good aspects. And if for some reason, um, President Biden doesn't run because of uh, uh, legal matters of his son or, or other things or health or whatever reason. Yeah. Um, very possible that the governor of California, Newsom, Newsom, yeah. is that how you say his name? Yes. And, uh -huh. and that he could, win, he could win. But it's going to be really close. And um, uh, DeSantis, I I thought for for a while, I, th I was looking at DeSantis as being, he had a lot of good aspects, but he's running into a lot of bad ones, difficult challenging ones now and um and trump those two guys are the main guys astrologically uh and uh haley is that her name haley nikki haley she has interest yeah yeah nikki haley she has really interesting aspects right now too but mm -hmm. she has pluto coming 
conjunct your sun, even though it would be trining your Saturn. So she's a powerful bottom line agent. Imagine if, if Trump and DeSantis join hands and oh. one's the vice president, the president. So there's a, there's a lot of possibilities. I'm still studying it. I'm, I'm predicting it's going to be really close and the Democrats uh, very well could win. Okay. All right. Then. But, but again, we have astrological, like, there, like for instance, April 20th is a new moon eclipse where yeah. Pluto. Now, in astrology, this is a very rough aspect. So coming up real soon is a huge shakeout of, like, if, if people have bad habits and addictive mm-hmm. habits and, and their negative emotions, any of, any of the people we know, ourselves or others, that have negative emotions and wrong habits, that we need to clean that up this spring because when we hit April 20th going through to the full moon of May, which will be uh, at mid, mid-Scorpio, uh, around 14 degrees Scorpio, the full moon in May. Mm-hmm. And this is, um, this is like where the Pluto perihelion took place in 1989. And that's when the walls of Russia fell. So a lot of astrology is historical cyclic. Like there's a lot of astrologers that just call it cyclic activity. And mm-hmm. so we come back to these uh, meaningful points in the sky like the thing with astrology is at least you're looking up and you look <laughs> and you're looking at this planetary geometry. And so, so in the course of, of April 20th to the full moon of May, are we going to find peace finally? Is there going to be a big transition with the war in Ukraine or is there going to be a big transition with who's running uh, for president? Is there is that, that either people are getting found guilty or they're being freed up. This is a big turning point and it's a great opportunity for all of us to become mm. sensitive to the spiritual world and the, the ethical, virtuous heart-mind that we're trying to awaken uh, the flowering of the intelligence of the heart. Like we have the, we have, there's a saying, uh, the or, early Christians used to say, though Christ a thousand times in Bethlehem be born, mm. unless in thy heart thy soul is forlorn. And if, if Jesus is resurrected a million times, unless we raise our consciousness and join in that work and be participant, co-creative. Um, we're going to feel lonely. We're going to feel cut off, you know? And so this is a great opportunity coming this next month and a half, <laughs> at, least the, at least the next next uh, two weeks after April 20th. This is a great opportunity to better your life and to try to have an inner life that can help balance the outer life. Because we have, mm-hmm. uh, in meditation and prayer, like prayer is trying to talk to God and meditation is listening with your heart. And mm-hmm. just like we know that the third eye is in your forehead. Jesus mm-hmm. says, if thine eye be single, thy whole body will be filled with light. Mm-hmm. And so, so now I'm telling you that I discovered on my own that the, thir- the third or the single ear is the heart. And that the word heart spells earth. Mm-hmm. The letters spell earth. Yep. And, and the, there's the word ear and hear in it. Mm. And any musician knows that the whole art of music is listening. And you have to listen with your heart because your head can fool you. Gotcha. Well, be, just break one. Let's take one quick break because what I want to do is I want to give your contact information for those of you who are listening or maybe listening. Um, you can reach Robert Thibodeau at the Mayflower Books shop. That phone number is 248 248- Five four seven eight two two seven, or you can um, go to his website, Mayflower Bookshop at mac.com. That's M A Y F L O W E R B O O K S H O P at M A C dot com. So I just wanted to get yeah, that awesome. your contact information. Go ahead. Also, like I, I had my beginning with the Theosophical Society. And there's one in Berkeley, Michigan. They're around the world. Uh, theosophy is, is the wisdom of God. Mm-hmm. And in Berkeley, Michigan, there's the Theosophy, uh, Theosophical Society. And in Ann Arbor, there's the Anthro. Anthro? A-N-T-H-R-O? When it comes to woman or man, we're talking about um, the wisdom of, of the thinker. Okay. And what is, um, oh, go ahead, 
were you going to talk a little bit about that? The wisdom of the thinker? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, Hello? I'm trying to tune in. Uh, okay. Yeah. Can you okay. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Okay. Might... So now can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Great. Great. I wanted to just so, I want to share a couple real quick before you go on. I wanted to share a couple more of your books because I think this was a really good author as well. Oh, before we move on, you were talking about Pluto and the power of Pluto and these upcoming aspects that you were talking about. There is a book that I got from your store called Healing Pluto Problems. So um, that might be something that people might yeah, be interested yeah. well, in. Pluto, Pluto is like um, like fasting or sacrifice to offering something up to make things better. You know, Pluto's death and rebirth, but also Pluto's having a baby and gardening. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to birth, we're trying to birth the Christ or the Buddha, the virtue out of the womb of our heart. Mm -hmm. So that's, we're trying to, the good side of Pluto is, is going back to school or inner school education, gardening, um, commit bonding, you know, but the bad side of Pluto is jealousy and possessiveness Right. Jealousy is when you love somebody. Jealousy is when you love somebody for who you want them to be, and anger is the worst than virtue because it destroys our good karma, mm -hmm. and um, attachment keeps us stuck. You know, and so you know people pay a lot of money to go on retreat, spiritual retreat. You know, whether it's Christian or Buddhist or whatever it is, yoga. Right. And so all you have to do is get the right books and go in your bedroom, go on retreat. Right, that's what I'm saying. I mean. Money. I mean, I wanted to just bring up another book that I thought is a really cool book. Uh, Caroline Miss, she does the sacred con uh, contracts, which is she's a uh, psychic healer. So she talks about yeah, yeah, yeah. and arch yeah. archetypes. <laughs> so, you know, which is archetype is the what is that? The eighth uh, chakra. We talk about the seven chakras and then the eighth chakra is it goes into archetypes. Yeah. But um, that's another good yeah. book that I got from your store. Um She's and a, there's, there's a book called Self Self Healing Cookbook by Turner. That's really great. Which okay. is another way to go is like hang out at all these health food stores everywhere, and you'll get into dialogues and meet people that are into healing, and many of them are into various spiritual things. You'd be surprised. Some are into Jesus, and some are into Buddha, and some are just being Americans that feel like they don't have to believe in God, but they can be honorable. So we have to like somehow get back to the American. Um, melting pot um, where where it's really uh, a, a new human being is being born out of America that's never been here before and that 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 human being is based on compassion and justice and a higher love and truth right I think we have the to United States it. of consciousness but don't you do you do how do you feel I believe you have to start with love self-love first and not a you know, love that you, you, you're um, not a negative self-love. And I was actually just listening to um, one of my Joyce Meyer. I listen to her sometimes and she was recently uh, given a sermon on that self-love, not that you, because if you don't really have that love or connection, <laughs> that inner connection within yourself, it's really hard to go among others and give something that you really, you're not, don't have yourself. Yeah, yeah. So right? Yeah, at, at the beginning level, you have to have love and you have to have truth, you know. Love and truth are trying to join up. In the ancient Holy Grail mystery um, of Celtic, Ireland and Britain and Europe, <clears throat> that, that they had this myth that was a myth reality, that mm -hmm. the bad guys had the sword of knowledge and the good guys have the cup of love. And whoever can put the sword and the cup together can rule their whole life in the world. And nice. so the bad guys are trying to get the cup and the good guys. So the good guys have love. So, you know? <laughs> but unless you have, you have to have a spiritual knowledge because if you don't have spiritual knowledge, you, you, you want, once you have a spiritual plan and spiritual thinking, then your passion and love can push the wish for enlightenment and happiness. And I think a lot of people have love, but they don't have spiritual thinking and they don't have the wisdom um, of God. With the wisdom of God is Sophia. It's a feminine angle. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have, like, if you don't have, like, a lot of people have love, but they don't have, they get victimized. And they feel 
nobody understands them. And they'll say, I'm spiritual. I love everybody, but it's impotent. Hmm. And so we, what we want is spiritual knowledge that can, can now, again, if we have knowledge without love, it's too hard and mean and, and it may even be right a lot, but it's mean always. and hurt. And we need we need love to go into the White House, like Marianne Williamson is running for president, says. Mm -hmm. and, and we need truth. And I think at the beginning level, you have to have love and compassion for yourself. But at, but at the beginning level of truth, truth is to be still and know that that I am uh, the virtue of God. Mm -hmm. And and so the the stillness at the beginning is where we will find more truth is by being still and looking at everything that's going on and what we know and don't know. Knowing what you don't know is half of the problem that people don't know what they don't know. Right. And so then, then we get a little bit of something and we push it too hard without wisdom. Right. We have, we have, there's an old saying, we have Christ, but not the wisdom of, of Christ. And when you look at the piece, this Sophia and the early Gnostic, Gospels and the Gospels that were taken out of the Bible before King James in 1611 puts the first English Bible together. There was a lot of women Gospels. There's Gospel of Mary, and there's yeah. Mary Magdalene was an initiate. There's a lot of women have been excluded from his story, history. There, we don't have her story. So when women get hip to that, then they push their story without men. And so we've lost the balance again. Right. And we're looking for a balance between spirit and matter between everything and the, and the stillness within where the true mind can awaken the universal mind. And mm -hmm. I think to a large extent at a beginning level, whether we call it Hermes or Christ or the Greek Christos or the Krishna of Hindu or the Christ of the Christian, that's the universal mind. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, let's just talk but a little bit about, things. Oh, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you. Talk about I was going to say, I wanted to, to talk about I want to ask you a little bit about your music because you recently uh, put out a new album, correct? Or a new song. Yeah, a new song. A new, I have a new, I have a bunch of new songs and more than an album worth of songs on my YouTube channel. If you go to mayflowerbookshop.com, you'll see a hookup to my talks uh, okay. or my, my music. And the great thing about finding my YouTube channel is that you can turn me off whenever you like. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. that's so again, that's going to Mayflower Bookshop <laughs> at Mac.com to your to Mayflower Bookshop, not at, but Mayflower Bookshop dot com. Oh, Mayflower Bookshop. Mayflower my website. Oh yeah, okay. and then you can find my hookup, Mayflower Bookshop dot com. -com and oh. that's my website. And okay. it's okay if you don't go there, you know, just try to be nice, you know. I tell my band guy, I have a new song called Oh Angel. Mm -hmm. And the O, the O represents that stillness, um, no self, you know, not I, but the Christ within me. That's what the Christians teach and the Buddhists teach emptiness practice. Mm -hmm. There has to be a certain amount of selflessness. As long as the world suffers like it does, we, we all could be a little more humble and learn something new. We're, even if we only plant a flower, even if we only clean our house. Mm -hmm. we're, even if we only help somebody less for if we help people that are less fortunate than ourselves out of compassion, there's a lot to learn and that every person I've ever met has something I can learn from to better myself. Mm -hmm. And every person I've ever met has something I could learn from that I should try to avoid or right. I would suffer. Right. We, we don't have, we don't, we, we have neither friend nor enemy. We only have teachers and mm -hmm. some of them teach us what to do. They teach us what to do and we'll end up like them. And yes. some teach us what not, not to do right? or we'll end up like them. Right, exactly. So again, these are just wisdoms and I've made it my life to study all the different wisdoms and they're like medicines depending on what you're going through. And we need inner medicine to mm -hmm. heal the inner wound that we can't see, that we're separate and that we're constantly at a perpetual war throughout history. Well, let me ask you, Robert, let me ask you this question because I'm, I'm referring to your book, Astrology, the Divine Science again. When I read the book, it talked about moving from the Piscean age where- um, To the Aquarian age, yeah. To the Aquarian age, but let me- I talk, a little, bit, I talk a little bit about that in my book. I have a book called 
per, um, Hermetic Rosicrucian Grail Tarot, and I have another book called Astrological Aspects of the Art, a 450-page book. The okay. Aquarian Age, the Aquarian Age in 2020 at solstice, when Jupiter and Saturn conjuncted in Aquarius, zero degree, uh-huh. we 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 started uh, the the feel the Aquarian Age. It's not like a light switch goes on. It might be a couple hundred years before we fully enter the Aquarian Age mm-hmm. officially when the first day of spring will be at the constellation Aquarius. Mm. But some people think we kind of started in the late 1800s with the Bhagavad Gita, which Martin Mm. Luther King read and Gandhi read and Mm. Einstein read and Blavatsky and Steiner read. Everybody read it. Manly Hall read it. Mm. Um, But I'm, I'm saying that we're really pushing now the Aquarian age and Pluto is going to go into Aquarius and that's like the it, Pluto and Aquarius. Aquarius opposes Leo. So the ego greed is kind of dying off now, like it or not. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're, we're entering a time of big brother or brother sisterhood. Mm-hmm. That either we're all brothers and sisters or, mm-hmm. or we need to be. We're, get, we're, we're fighting so much and wrecking the earth that somebody's going to take over the planet. Mm-hmm. And it looks like if we don't get it together here, it'll be China. And they're going to enforce a unity and a brotherhood that, mm-hmm. that there's no freedom and individuality to out of freedom to come to the sense of communion and community and brotherhood, the mm-hmm. beloved community Martin Luther King Jr. Talked about. And I met Rosa Parks. She had been to my bookstore a few times mm-hmm. and we just hold my hand as she talked to me. Oh, wow. And we all need to, we all need to be like that. Yeah. Awesome. We need to, we need to walk the work. <laughs> right. We have a lot more help. <laughs> yeah. I just I want to make a quick correction that um, the uh, Mayflower Bookshop at Mac.com, that's actually your email address, um, but your website, yeah, right, Mayflowerbookshop.com. Right. website uh, Mayflowerbookshop.com. Right. The email is Mayflowerbookshop at Mac.com. Okay. But I mean, Mayflower Bookshop, I'm online. Thank- you know, just look up. Yeah. yeah, Mayflower Bookshop, Astrology, you'll find me. And and again, it's not so, you could go to Self-Realization Yogananda Fellowship in Detroit. You could go to yeah. yoga centers I everywhere. Got that book. I and, got that book from you also, Paramahansa Yogananda, the Autobiography of a Yogi. That's one of the books I, I have with me here that I was going to bring up. Yeah, I've been to that uh, fellowship community. Um, but thank you. Yeah, Yogananda okay. was- go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share what could bring us together and also what would help us each be a unique individual. Because once you discover the holy, the holy silence in you, uh, the divine feminine and the divine in you, the God in you, the virtue in you, um, each one of us is a unique expression of the oneness. Each one of us is a unique expression of divinity. We're all a living spirit in the temple of God. Our bodies are the temple of, we're trying to birth the baby Buddha and Jesus out of our heart, you know? So right. otherwise let's, let's be an all American and share dinner. <laughs> okay. Sounds I mean, good. America, Dick Gregory, <clears throat> Dick Gregory used to say, he used to really be into this fact that America is where we found freedom. And, and even though we're failing sometimes, America is the number one place that we had the opportunity to get rich inwardly, outwardly, that we could be free to marry each other and take care of each other. There's amen. Something special I'm going to say, and we, amen. I'm going to thank you. Amen. I'm going to say amen on that. that all men and women too. All men and women and too. It's not all men. <laughs> yeah, we are. At I'm making jokes. Um, amen. A women, however you want to say it. But thank you so much for thank being here. so much. Show on my podcast. It's yeah. been wonderful. We're going to have to have you come back because there's so much more information I know you can share. But until next time, yeah. thank you all for joining me today. Please watch the rebroadcast if you missed it today. Uh, anywhere you watch your podcast, stay safe, stay well. Until next time, namaste. Namaste.